Uh, and I'm not going to take any more, I'm afraid. Uh, the gentleman here, then the gentleman over there, and the gentleman there. Please ask your questions, and then you can choose which ones you answer. Uh, Brunello Rosa, Rosa Rovini Associates. Uh, in this great power competition of these years, which, quant which country do you see being ahead in their high development, especially considering some of them may have very different uh, approaches to AI, not f for example, so many ethical considerations? And how do you see this interacting with the development of quantum computing, for example, which is likely to turbo boost AI? Thank you. Gentleman over there, and could you pass the microphone to the gentleman here? Yeah. Thank you. Please go ahead, just speak. I think the microphone's on. Yeah, so the question is what about the regulation? Because, what, as a daily user of um, ChatGPT and all other use, uh, tools, I see that it has become less usable with the regulation, and it seems that regulation is trying to stop rather than steer the right direction. And then the follow up things do we need to review such the you know, intellectual property rights to make it more uh, productive, the tools that the, the AI tools that we have? Okay. Last question. Thanks very much. Assume we follow the bad path and no corrective measures are there. What's going to be the boiling point and the political consequences for the society? I don't know the answer. That's a great question. I think uh, there may not be a single break point. We may be more like the frog that's boiling with the water. But the telltale sign would be a bigger increase in the gap between capital income and labor income and more dominance of a handful of companies. And the other two questions are actually, I think, in the way that I'm reading them, are very related. I think AI is a global technology, so we need to regulate it globally. Competition can coexist with regulation. And in fact, I would say, sure, there are aspects of how China is using AI, including excessive investment in facial regulation, surveillance, the social credit system, that are inconsistent with democratic values. But when you look at it from a global perspective, it's the United States that's behind. China has, for example, shown how you can regulate AI. So it has become a uh, commonplace among both uh, tech leaders and many commentators that AI cannot be regulated because it's so fast moving, it's so complex. Well, China proves it can be regulated. A AI is very successfully regulated. Almost all AI companies are doing the Chinese Communist Party's bidding. Uh, it's some harmful of users to on children has been regulated in China. Some good users of AI have been banned because they want to control AI. But China shows how it can be regulated. European Union shows how it can be regulated. So I think global competition can coexist with a good framework for many things, for example, mental health, for example, increasing productivity of workers. Every country would be on board with that. So I think there is a lot of room for the United States to catch up with other countries in terms of regulation. But it's also very important there that it's not the United States doing it just for its own tech companies, but the global voice. The voice of those 5 billion people are also part of the equation. Thank you. I learned in my central banking life that if you have the credibility you can overrun without this hurting your reputation to do it next time, you can overrun. So we slightly did. Let me thank you, Darren, on behalf of everyone uh, from the group of 30 for this lecture. Please give a round of applause to Darren. Thank you, Axel. Thank you.